Sister Living Business Series podcast. Um, today we're going to be discussing the money. Um, the name of this episode is going to be Show Me the Money, a Sister Living Revenue Case Study. And what I'm going to do is break down the actual cost of um, what, it, what, I, what I put up to get a particular home um, set up for assisted living. I'm going to talk about um, the mortgage, the furnishings, the uh, the other things that you have to think about when you're setting up the property. <clears throat> then we're going to go into the fixed costs, uh, the mortgage, the electric, the water, all the things that um, they're, they're going to be recurring every month. We're going to talk about the payroll um, and your, your, with your, sa- your staff structure and things of that nature. So um, <clears throat> then at the end, uh, there's going to be a... a Another portion where I'm going to just kind of talk about some value adds that you can bring to your assisted living facility or to your uh, f- f- assisted living home to, you know, add more value and to, uh, to, to charge more, to get more, get to, to, to raise your fees a little higher by adding more uh, specialty um, benefits and stuff like that. So. Um, let's get into it. Let me make sure I have everything shut down. It look like I just got a notification. Let me shut this stuff down. <clears throat> and we can get started. So, depending on what you're going to do to get to acquire the property, is you going to rent or, uh, you know, rent slash lease, or you're going to actually buy a property. For this particular property that we're going to discuss, this was a property that we purchased, uh, so it the 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 mortgage the 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 whole the the total mortgage price was two eighty five two ninety um two two hundred ninety five thousand two hundred and eighty five thousand to be if I'm exact two hundred and eighty five thousand was what we paid for this property um the down payment was twelve thousand and um the mortgage is seventeen eighty a month. So that's obviously a, a upfront cost that you have to think about when you're going into a to purchasing the property, getting yourself prepared to purchase. Um, you know, making sure you go through the proper uh, programs. If you're, if you're a first time home buyer, I would suggest going into the uh, the first time home buyers program in your in your county. Um, they also offer down payment assistance and things like that. <clears throat> in this particular property, is a three two. Uh, a little bit over a thousand square feet. Three two meaning it has three bedrooms, two baths, and it's a ba- and it has a basement. So uh, it's just something to think about when you when you're going into the purchase property to purchase um, process. You want to make sure the property has at least a thousand square feet. Um, in the minimum sizes per the single rooms, the private rooms, you want to make sure they're at least. The, 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 the private rooms that you're going to offer is private rooms. You want to make sure they're at least 80 square feet. And the semi-private rooms are at least uh, 120 to 140 square feet. Um, and then we, we, we always look for a basement or like a den area so we can have uh, caregivers living quarters. So these are some of the things you want to look for. And, you know, tell your realtor is part of the criteria when you start to look for a property. Obviously, the same goes if you're leasing a property. You still want to have these same um, criterias and... Um, you know, this is what you, you know, if you're going through a realtor, also, you just make sure he knows that these, these are some of the things that you have to have, these these um, measurements and so forth. <clears throat> like I said, the down payment on this prop, this particular property was $12,000. Um, a lot of people don't have that. And if it was our first property, we would have been able to get uh, some down payment assistance on the first property that I did buy. We did have, we did go through a, a home buyers program. But once you buy, you know, I think you only can use that like every two years or something like that or every five years. I don't know. But you can only get uh, down down payment assistance every so often. Um, so if this is your first home that you're going to purchase, great. Go to the down the first time um, home buyers program and ask for down payment assistance uh, through your through your mortgage broker or your realtor should have some information about that as well. <laughs> Um, if you're leasing, obviously you don't have to worry about that. The lease is only going to be um, the first month's rent and usually just a security deposit. So that should come around like three thousand. Um, did you have to put up in the in the in the front end for a lease property? <clears throat> Once you have your property secured, you have to think about the uh, 
the furnishings, obviously. So the bedrooms, we for this particular property, we went with all new furniture, and we were able to furnish the bedrooms for nineteen hundred, and that was. So this is a four, a three. This is a three, three two that we're discussing. It's three bedrooms and two bathrooms. So we we only putting four people in this property, and uh, so we were able to get four 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 bedroom sets. Even though one of the you know bed, bedrooms are going to have two people, we still need these uh, these furnishes. And this is this is based on the state's requirements, um, which is it's a, it's a twin size bed, a lamp, a nightstand, a dresser, and a chair. So those are the five pieces of furniture that we got four times for nineteen hundred. Um, and, and it made and, it, and and all the stuff was new. This but this wasn't including the mattresses. I found the mattresses on um some brand new mattresses on um FaceTime Marketplace. It was this guy, he's a wholesaler, he just sells all his stuff through Facebook and stuff like that, and we got the mattresses for, for like a hundred bucks. The mattress and the bed the mattress and the and the um box springs for twin sizes for a hundred a piece. So um we got the furnishings, the furniture and the, the the box spring not the not the bed, but like the bed frame came with those furnishings, but not the mattress and the box spring. Um for common areas we went with used stuff. We went to like the Goodwill, Craigslist, again offer up and Facebook Marketplace to get like couches, chairs, um we found a, a a very inexpensive dinette set on on a, either offer up or facebook marketplace and it, it's it's really nice and sometimes you can find nice stuff that you just have to clean up you may have to paint it you know and i think we only spent up to 600 bucks for all the common era stuff because we did go use kitchen stuff you know the kitchen um the, the kitchen uh, the, like the, the the plates the pots and pans and stuff like that we always go to the goodwill um a rule of thumb when you go to the goodwill you want to go to the most the most uh, the, the, the the most the best the mo- the wealthiest community you can go into and go to their goodwill and you'll find a lot of stuff that's, that's, that's never even been used so i'm in a annapolis area which is a pretty high-end community so we go to the goodwill and i always can find like a, a box of like cup like a, a glass glassware uh, like cups, glasses, and stuff like that for like twenty, thirty bucks. But it's be brand new stuff, and it may be like a set of like fifteen, um, fifteen cups and all all the things you need for your cups. And the same with the dishes, pots and pans, and silverware, and all the trays and stuff like that. You can also get like uh, pot holders, and I mean, I'm sure everybody's been in the Goodwill before, but it, just just try to go to a Goodwill that's in a more higher end area, and you'll find a lot of great stuff for your kitchen, and then also your other stuff like little chairs and um uh little coffee tables and just different things to little accent stuff that you can put around the property that that just makes it look nice and homely and 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 stuff you can't really tell if you if you if you take your time and find good stuff you wouldn't tell that that stuff wasn't new or it's been there you know um so <clears throat> I don't want you to go get a whole bunch of cheap looking stuff because then people are going to be like, you know, your place look raggedy. But you could find some good stuff on like OfferUp, the Goodwill, Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. We don't go anywhere besides those places or if, if we're not buying new. Certain things we do buy new because of, you know, we, we have a connection with the vendor and we do offer that that uh, that 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 connection to our coaching clients. But um, you can find most of this stuff online um in different um secondhand sites <laughs> fire extinguishers these are this is something else that we had to make sure we had uh two fire extinguishers you can get at least you can get two uh brand new fire extinguishers with the actual dates on them cuz the state re- most states require that you have fire extinguishers with the with the date on it so it has to have like the date and how old it is and when is it when is the last time it's been checked and all that stuff it has to be on the actual um, extinguisher on both of them so you can get two so we usually keep one in the kitchen and one in the utility room and if you have a bigger house you probably need more but um just you know we keep one in the kitchen and one in the utility room and they both have to have that specific uh um certification on it the little tag and to get the ones with the tag go just go to home depot and get them don't try to order them online because they are some cheaper ones online but you won't get that little certification tag that comes with it <clears throat> Um, and like I said, we got two for like 125 bucks. Uh, uh, we, you know, most properties when you buy them, they already have a refrigerator, but 
when you set up assisted living, you want to have another small refrigerator with a lock on it that you keep certain medications in there. And um, some states require that to, that you have that as well. And you can find a small lock refrigerator to keep your medication in uh, for about a hundred bucks. So I think we got this one on Amazon. Um, but I seen some at Walmart and stuff like that. Um, then they got the the rake, the raised toilet seats we had to buy. They were like thirty five bucks per per toilet so that's you know we got two toilets that's 35 times two um <clears throat> then we had the wall rails the wall rails are um for like the longer hallways we have a long, one long hallway in the property that i felt like we should you know it's just wall so we just put a put up a a, a nice little rail to match the accent on the wood you know the framing of the house in the house some of the accented wood um and we just put it up and we got a rail it was like a three foot rail that we got that it was real easy to install you just um screw it into the wall you know all the instructions are in there you just put it up there yourself it's nothing that you have to get any you know contractors to come put in for you you could buy it right on um on amazon and, and um just put the rail up yourself that was like uh 70 bucks for that rail it's like three feet and that was pretty much the uh a good portion of the hallway so you can just put it right in the middle and, you know, if people need the, that extra help when they're walking down the hallway, it, 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 it's there for them, the rail. Um, and then you can, if you have a longer area, a bigger area, you can just buy more, you know, if you if you look on Amazon, they have different um, sizes. So, like, obviously, the longer it is, the more it's going to cost. But um, 70, so look at to, look to pay 70 per every uh, three feet if you go that way. But, I mean, if you shop around, you can definitely get a lot, a lot of this stuff. Um a lot more inexpensive <clears throat> so those are like some of the things that you, you're definitely going to have going to need when you when you're just setting your property up um and a lot of people think that you know when you're doing an assisted living you have to turn your house into a nursing home <laughs> that's not the case you don't need all of these uh hospital beds and all these other things there are bed rails that you can get like bed guards um that you can get to go right on on a regular bed you just put them like under the mattress and uh, on top of the box spring and they're like guard bed rails and they're, they're pretty inexpensive and we just get them on a case-by-case -case basis depending on what family you know needs them and stuff like that um but they're pretty inexpensive too you can get those all, as well on um like amazon stuff for like 50 60 bucks um <clears throat> And then again, you can look a lot of this stuff up on Craigslist. You can get it, you know, used or go to medical equipment places and they might have some stuff cheap used or uh, that, they, that they'll sell at a discount. And then also, um, yeah, you can go. To, oh, yeah. I, I also like to go to uh, private pharmacies. They have a lot of this stuff as well. They have a lot of, uh, of your other um stuff like uh, gloves like different first aid stuff that you're going to need around the house for for the seniors they got chucks and different things like that for the bed or uh, depends and stuff like that they and they usually have discounted rates a lot of people never even been to a private pharmacy but it's just like cvs but it's just a privately owned and they're they're in like certain communities so check there and see what their um prices are as well when you're shopping around for different things i like to go to the uh, private pharmacies because they do have like walkers and stuff like that that people you know that they'll sell at a cheaper rate <clears throat> The monthly fixed cost, uh, I think I said already, is like it's already it's seventeen eighty a month. That's the mortgage. And if you're renting, you should probably be renting. If you're renting a three, a three bedroom, so rent can be a lot different in each market. So it's kind of hard for me to give you a number. If you you, if you're in your own market, you'll know better than I would. If wherever you are, what the uh, market, is, the rent for a, a, a three bedroom, a hundred square foot, I mean a thousand square foot property. Um. But in most markets, I feel like you should be able to get it for at least seventeen hundred. I'm, you know, unless you're like in a really, you know, high end market where things are just out of control and it might not even, you know, it might not even be nowhere near that. But in in our marketplace, even if we don't, even if I'm not buying, my rent would still be close to about seventeen, fifteen to seventeen hundred for a three bedroom part, uh, uh, a three bedroom home if I was renting or purchasing. So. <clears throat> 
And then in some markets, the mortgage is also is 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 most is a lot of times less than the rent will be. So that's another reason for you to think about purchasing, um, opposed to leasing. And I'm I'm really for purchasing because when you when you lease, um, you just have that third person involved, the the landlord, and it's like this one more headache that you really don't want. But if you have to go that route, it's okay as long as you're up front and you explain to them exactly what you're doing. Um, <clears throat> it should be fine, and you and you and you lock in a longer lease term. Than, than normal you know you don't want to get the property and just be leasing it year to year you want to try to lock in at least three to five year lease because you are doing a business and it takes time to get that business set up get it get it rolling and before you can actually start um you know having having some income and get some uh get your revenue coming back in that you you know that you put into the property into the stuff like that so um if you're purchasing you're good if you're renting or you're leasing try to get a long-term lease <clears throat> and like i said our mortgage is, is a seventeen eighty a month for this particular property the electric is between like 150 125 to 150 um and because we're you know we, we're getting residents here getting residents in the the, the electric obviously going to go up and um you know that's to be expected the more people using the stuff it's going to go up and uh but our our uh, electric company allows us to get on what they, what's called budget billing. So we get a locked in rate every month. So our locked in rate is going to be like 150 every month. And then I think at a certain time, I think after the, at the end of the year, we could either have used less or more. And depending on that, either it'll go up or we uh, or, or we'll have to pay like the surplus that we used, the, the, the extra that we went over the budget. And then we have to pay that and then restart it again for the next year. Or if we didn't use as much, they, uh, they deduct it. They don't give you any money back. They just deduct your, your, uh, your rate going forward. And, um, and it, and it just adjusts based on your usage. But if you just check and see if your utility company is, will, will, you know, give you a, a set rate, like a, a um, a set rate based on you know a set rate every month, so that so your electric bill isn't fluctuating every month because you don't want to have like in the summertime everybody using the air conditioning. Now your your electric then spiked to four hundred, um, when last month it was only two hundred, and now you know that's kind of messing up your um your budget. So if you can see if your electric company offers. Uh, some type of um, budget billing where it's it's a, it's one rate for the entire year, um, <clears throat> and our in our in our company they don't they don't they not only uh, do our electric but they also do our uh, our gas. So our gas and our electric is um in that budget. So it's not just electric; it's also gas as well. Our water bill is pretty, you know. It's, again, it's 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 pretty. It's about thirty three dollars a month, but we only have to pay it like every. I think I get a bill like every six months for that for that particular property, and it and, and it and it and it rounds out to about like thirty four thirty five dollars a month. Um, cable internet bundle is about one one eighty one eighty five a month, but that's included with the home security with two cameras. And um, that's through Xfinity, so we definitely have a security, a security, uh, a home security, on our on our properties, so the families and the, care, the clients and the caregivers can feel safe in, in the actual property. And security is definitely something that that the families want to make sure that they're 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 receiving, um, that they're, they're that their that their loved one is receiving. They want to feel safe and they want to feel secure in their property. So you can't, you basically can't have a property, you can't have a senior living facility without without um, home security at the at at this point, um, it's it's cheap, it's affordable, and it's very easy to set up. Most of the um, like Comcast, most of your cable companies and your service, your cable service providers, they 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 provide that as well. <clears throat> it's um, another fixed cost that's you know consistent every month is groceries. So we try to stay between four fifty and five fifty based on our menu, and that does include um, all four residents. And the caregivers, the, the living caregiver. So, but we buy bulk, so we go to like Sam's Club and stuff like that. And then, you know, one thing you got to remember: seniors don't eat large portions. Most of them are on strict diet, so um, your your grocery bill shouldn't be too out of control. Um, and if you if you're making good sized portions and you're you're planning meals in the head, and that's just not cooking on the fly, and your caregivers aren't eating up all your food, um, 
you should you should be able to stay in that range between 450 and 550 a month um <clears throat> when it comes to payroll uh the caregiver is the living caregiver is is we're giving her you know between 175 and 185 a day and that depends on the situation with her uh living standard i mean with with her with with her living uh agreement with us in the property if she's there um five days a week and she has her actual her own living quarters in there we could we could charge we could pay her a little less because it's you know in exchange for her having a a, a rent free environment where she got food free food um food and board room and board um internet and all this stuff electric is included so once you have all those things for her then you, you don't have to pay them as much because it's like okay you're getting all this stuff free or you could pay rent and you get the more money but most of them would, pre- would rather um <clears throat> you know have a get paid a little less but have a, a rent free environment where they're getting free internet um cable food and all that stuff so you can definitely pay them a little less um the assistant living manager is usually 2500 a month so um <clears throat> again this is a this is a fee that, that you pay to to someone who's going to be actually overseeing the whole the, the whole business this is the manager this is the this is the person who is um overseeing the whole the whole operation for you they do they're, 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 they're managing the caregivers they're overseeing all the paperwork they're 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 dealing with the nurse they're dealing with the intake process they're part of the, you know they're they're involved in the intake process they're um doing making sure the paperwork and all the um the documentation is up to par for the state and they're and they're and they're communicating with the with the nurse the families and the caregivers so the uh they're not on a fixed schedule, so we don't pay them hourly. Pay them like the twenty five hundred is like salary, and they just have to, you know, be there as needed, and you know, come in at a, you know, on a certain schedule to make sure all of those tasks are being taken care of. On a day to day basis, we don't necessarily need them to be there, but they do have to be available for certain um, events, certain follow ups with the different residents and stuff like that, and then um, also to oversee the caregivers. The activities, make sure that activities are being done as scheduled. The meals are being, you know, um, prepared as scheduled. And just everything in the house is running um, pretty, pretty smoothly. <clears throat> and then your delegate nurse, we're not. <coughs> oh, oh, and then on a side note, in your first property, your sister, you, you, instead of paying that person, paying somebody else, you can um, actually keep that um, 2500 to yourself and you manage the property. And that's how you, I would expect anyone to do it in the very beginning if they have the time and they don't want to um, Im- immediately step out the way and get back into other things that they may be doing. If this is an investment and you have a, another job that you don't really, you know, you're not trying to get away from, but you're trying to set this up as an investment property and um, then putting a, a manager in place is definitely a good, a good, a good idea. And, um, and um you know not doing it yourself but if you don't and you're looking to you know transition out of your job and then run your own thing and kind of be self-employed then you you can definitely take over that management position and then eliminate that that uh portion of your payroll uh, and then we pay our delegate nurse PRN so as she as she as needed so we we want them to, our nurse to come in at least twice a week I mean uh, twice a month <clears throat> um and then do our do all our intakes but once you know the house is full, you don't got to do no intakes no more. So, so, so if you only have a property of four, and then when people leave and then come back, you know, new people and stuff like that. So that's not happening all the time. But they do oversee the people who are there, the residents there. They do. Um, every other week, we want them to just come in and do a routine visits. And then the state requires them to come every 45 days as well. So they're, you know, they're there to oversee the manager's um, documentation, the caregiver's documentation, and um, sign off on certain things and just keep a close eye on the residents um, from the medical and nursing perspective. Um, And that's something you pretty much can't get around. Our fixed cost is uh, around $10,000 a month for this this particular property. Like the monthly cost is around $10,000, like $10,100. 10 10 you know 10,000 um something like that but it's real close to 10 
ten k a month just for the the fixed cost to, with the payroll, groceries, cable, internet, water, mortgage, and stuff like that. But uh, conservatively, if we're we're charging each room, the single rooms are four grand, um, and then the double occupancy rooms are uh, thirty five. So <clears throat> we have two bedrooms that we're renting out. I mean, each the private rooms that we call them private or semi private. We have two private rooms that are going for four grand uh, a month. So that's eight grand for two rooms, and then we have. Uh, the double, uh, the double, the, what we call semi, semi private, where we're getting thirty five hundred per room. So, um, so yeah, we're getting. So basically, it's eight and seven for for this entire for the for the we're getting two the, the two single rooms is for eight thousand, and then the double occupancy room, which is one room, but there's two people in there, that's seven thousand. So. With that, we're getting we're bringing in roughly fifteen grand a month for this particular property. When there are, and this is a conservative, you know, um, rates. Um, there are different. You can definitely charge more. Um, in, in particular situations, and you know, different di- different scenarios and different value adds that you can bring to a property. So, <clears throat> so basically, after. After everything is said and done, we're we're probably we're profiting about four forty five to five grand a month on this particular property. And you say, oh well, is it you know what is that you know is that really worth it? You know it's up you know a lot of people it may not be, but for us we're looking at it as from from an annual perspective. That's uh, basically like fifty grand a year for this property that that's coming in after all the things that um all, after the caregivers are covered the house is paid for everything else is um taken care of and you do have like minor updates and things like that that you have to worry about uh you know like miscellaneous things that that, that, that have to be paid for here and there so it can you know be be less some months and then something some months it's just you know nothing nothing went wrong everything was smooth and, and you walk away with your full your full net so um <clears throat> some of the things that you could think about to increase the um your rates are uh some of the things that we offer because of where we are located we have a, a ymca membership to all our residents because the, the ymca is almost um it's not even it's it's like 1.6 miles away so it's like not even two miles away from our property and you know if you ever been to a ymca it's like full of seniors they have all kind of senior programs so we offer that um we offer you know filtered and spring water opposed to just faucet water like these are little things that you could just kind of think about and they add up to um you know, to be able to add value to your to your to your actual facility. So like filter water and spring water opposed to uh just regular old faucet water. Um we have a lot of activities. So we do um out uh like field trips to the uh daily and um you know a couple times a week visits to the uh senior centers that um this included. They don't have to have a they don't have to have a membership or anything like that to the the daycare centers. We have a, again a very uh, another daycare a, day, a daycare center very close to our facility. It's um it's even closer to the gym. And that's the reason why we bought this property because it has so many features that we can uh, um offer to the people who live there at a you know um it's free to us pretty much because we already communicated with these different places and worked out memberships and um but to the families it's definitely something they that they can be excited about we have uh private beach access because we have um we're right on the water when annapolis maryland is is a uh is right on the water the, the the whole community so we have what we call water privilege uh, we're in a water privilege community so they get private beach access where they can go we can go to the beach we could do fishing um sit out on the sand do like barbecues and you know little picnics that's right on the beach and it's a private beach so it's not like a, the whole community it's not like a public beach where you have all these different people it's just people from the community um that you know visit this beach and you know have access so this is another value add when you when you start thinking about where in um 
where where in what communities and what things that you feel like will be able be able you'll be able to offer to to increase that rate but not just to, to get more money but to, to you know add more value to these people's lives to their family members and then to the actual um residents um we talked about in our last in our last uh podcast i think we talked about the caregivers and the, the, and 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 um continue education so Another thing that we offer and then we mentioned that our caregivers are certified in dementia, Parkinson's and stuff like that to where as though um, we're specialized in these particular um, these particular these these particular diseases. So if they're they have a family member who, you know, suffers from one of these um, these diseases, we, we, we have certified caregivers to help them um with diabetes and stuff like that dementia parkinson's and just some of the top uh the top you know top diseases that seniors are dealing with in in, in our nation right now um <clears throat> weekly religious services you know different people have different religious beliefs um we're, we're more than welcome to accommodate them as far as getting them to and from their uh services everybody doesn't go to church some are, some people have different religions some people are muslim and jewish and you know different sections of christianity catholic and stuff like that and we're and we accommodate those um we will set up if if they can't actually lead a property we'll you know arrange with you know uh, the the religious group in the community to come and they and they're more than happy to come and hang out with the um not hang out, but like do like a Bible study at the facility and a private session with the with the uh, particular resident. Um, all you got to do is contact them. Um, another great thing that you could use is the 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 girls and boy scouts in the community. It's um, also more than willing more, more than willing to send over and do like monthly like uh, visits to your home and do like little projects that just you know when you see kids and seniors hanging out it's just a whole different energy um it's great that they they get the you know you see the smiles on the kids faces and then you see the seniors light up um and these are just some of the other things these are just some of the things that you can uh think about when you're trying to add value to your facility you just don't want it to be like okay uh, uh, a place where they, they just live boring you know they get up you know, watch TV, eat and go back to bed. No, you want to have a lot of activities and then you want to present this to these people, um, to their families. Um, some people prefer organic foods, so you can, you know, definitely cater to specific, uh, food needs. Another thing that I like to do when it comes to shopping, so I don't have to, um, worry about the groceries. I just thought about this is Instacart. We order all our stuff, pre you could pre order all your uh food on Instacart and have it delivered at on a specific day every month or every other week for like vegetables and stuff like that. We could just we have a grocery store that's real close. So we keep fresh vegetables and you know meats and stuff like that. But for uh, for everything else you can pre order it uh, a month in advance and then that stuff will get ordered straight to the door. So your caregivers not doesn't have to worry about or your manager doesn't have to worry about going out and, you know, spending the whole day or however long it take going to shop. Um, you can have that stuff delivered for three or four bucks um, straight to the door. So think about using Instacart as well. Um, 24 hour on call medical staff. <clears throat> a lot of facilities don't offer that. That's something we offer. And we have that because we have a overnight a live in a wake overnight and then also uh, a 24 hour nurse on call so those you know there's a, a couple other things that you want to make sure that you you're, you're you're telling the people that you have and um that you offer at your facility to kind of add value to you know um your your home opposed to the other the other options that may not have these things so but um that's pretty much it when it comes to like um the the how we set up our this particular property um it's it was it's fairly i don't know how complicated or simple this was but it's from my perspective it's pretty simple it's pretty straightforward um a lot like i said a lot of this stuff like when it comes to the furnishing well like the the, the cost of the property it's only going it's always going to it's i mean you you, you pretty can't you pretty much going to get what you get unless you're um I mean, it's pretty hard to, to like change that number, 
um, unless you're like into like an investor and you you know you 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 get a great deal at a property or something like that. But usually it's going to cost you in, in in most markets you're going to spend at least a 250k for a three a single family three bedroom at a thousand square feet and it, and it could be much much more and and in, in, in other markets but um and it could be a little less in other markets as well and again uh, and if you're leasing 1500 to 1700 a month is what i'm you know what 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 i can see in most in in in, in our marketplace in pretty much all the areas closer to me 15 to 1700 more closer to the 17 for a three bedroom and um it's just not going to get too much cheaper than that in most in most markets at this point um uh, but there are but there are other things that you can absolutely absolutely cut cost on so go use think about um sites like offer up goodwill uh, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, and um, and um, like what's those things that they have like yard sales? Go to, and like yard sales when you see different yard sales and stuff like that. So like you might want a chair or a little accent table and stuff like that. Um, because it takes time to get it set up, and um, even if you don't have a property yet, you can start kind. Of, but if you know this is the direction you can go in, it, you can start kind of shopping around and just start kind of getting this stuff now. So when you do get the property, you'll be ready. So you'll have you maybe have a couple of tables, a couple of chairs, a, a dresser here, a nice stand there, a lamp, you know, and you can start acquiring this stuff now. Be you know, so you know it it won't all happen. You know, you won't have to worry about all this stuff at one time. And that's another thing. <laughs> a lot of people are on a fixed budget. You know, just got one job. They're, 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 this is the first business that they're doing. Um, don't be overwhelmed by the numbers. Take your time. Get these things in in, in step by step. You know, you you know, you don't have to get everything. You don't have to get the bedroom furnishing, the kitchen. You know, everything done in one swoop. You know, on one in one month you know take your time buy these things as the as as time goes past and then you know when you finally open up um because it's going to take time to get your license some states don't require a license but most do it, and it's not going to be a quick pro it's not going to be overnight so you still have time to have all this stuff uh together before your property is actually open for business and resi ready to take residence um <clears throat> Another thing I would suggest doing is going out into your market and taking a look around, see what other facilities like the one you're going to set up are doing. You know, look at the, some of the furnishings, look at some of the offers, some of the things that they're offer, offering the families and offering the residents. Um, take those ideas, you know, see what you can use, see what you feel like, you know, you can implement or you could do better or something that you could do a little, you know, um, a little more affordable, you know always use the surrounding market as as your as your as your as your case study you know learn your competitors the the other properties and and see what's going on in your marketplace just secret shop go visit a couple different facilities and see what they're talking about see what they're offering see how much they're charging for what for what services what's included what's not included um <clears throat> and yeah that's it and that should give you a, a, a better idea on how to set your facility up and, 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 you know, what to offer, what not to offer and, and how much money you can expect to make. Um, I feel like if we can make between a good, if we can make 30, 37 to 45 K a year after, after our investment, after our, our after our costs, I'm happy with that per property you know because my goal is to um you know acquire multiple properties between now until retirement i'm 30 i feel, I feel like i may have 20 more years in this stuff and and hopefully you know i can acquire you know quite a bit of properties within that time frame 10 properties um you know at that rate is is a half a million a year or I mean that's at that size, but if we get bigger properties, we can probably get there quicker with four or five properties, six or seven properties, and we can, you know, be. And this is passive income. This isn't income that we have to go out and, you know, bust our hump every month to get. We get it, you know, passively because we've set up these businesses, we set up these properties 
to function on their own. Obviously, we got to oversee them and manage them and make sure they're in, in good standing at all times. But that's just, you know, that's more of a, um, you know, a CEO's job to, you know, oversee, make sure everything is working and, and keeping an eye on the future and what's coming and how we can um, adjust and adapt and take advantage of future changes in the marketplace. But for the most part, these businesses, once you set them up correctly with a manager, a good, um, a good staff of caregivers, in a nurse, your property should be good to go. And you always want to have a, um, a contractor on standby who, you know, who we like to give, you know, 750 deposit. So if anything breaks down, we're first on his call. Say, hey, like, look, because we can't have our seniors in a property where the lights aren't working or the, 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 the bathroom, the toilet is broke. You know, we have to be first in line when, you know, when that stuff happens that, you know, he's going to get out there to us. So we give him a retainer. So when these things do happen, when little small things do happen around the property, it can get fixed immediately. Um, that's another thing I wanted to um, I forgot to mention. But um, for the most part, if we're making between 30, 35, 45 K a year, I'm cool with that per property. Um, it doesn't seem like much when you're just looking at it for one property. But if you have a whole nother job or you got a whole nother business that you're running and that money's coming in, it's 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 not bad. It's not a bad start for a uh, long term inve investment. And when you look at a property from traditional real estate perspective, um, a three t a three a three bed a three bedroom two bath from a traditional real estate um um investment strategy they're just going to put a family in there and they're going to basically be charging if they if they get the property at you know and they're paying they, they pay if they got a mortgage on the property and they're paying 15 1700 what are, what are they going to offer what are they going to rent it out for 18 1900 and make 200 dollars a month you know like that's the traditional real estate real estate strategy for single family homes and it just doesn't make sense to me how people still do that when it's for opportunities like out like this out here and the 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 barrier of entry is a little higher because it's a little bit more complex and you have to deal with medical um you know it's it's, it's medical and people kind of like shy away from it if they don't have any kind of you know um experience or knowledge of that field so they kind of run from it and that's good let them run from it so we as people who are excited about the healthcare industry and senior housing and senior care we could take advantage of it so um i really i really believe in the strategy i think it's a great long-term um investment strategy for someone who's trying to build wealth and you know put their family in a better community or you know you know pay for kids college and you know um <clears throat> set up trust funds and stuff like that i feel like it's a great strategy um for one property and um yeah that's pretty much it um hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you have any questions feel free to jump on our uh, website um and go down to the, the very bottom of the page and, and follow us on facebook and instagram and leave comments you can leave comments um you can shoot us an email you can um, shoot us d direct messages on our Facebook page. Our Facebook page is pretty pretty much like our front line of communication. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, just 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 go ahead to our. Uh, it's called the Alan Cheney Home Care Business Coaching website on Facebook. I mean Facebook page, and then also the AlanCheney.com is our website. We can also visit us and um, contact us from there. Check out some of the programs that we have. We have a done for you program where we walk you through the entire process of setting up your assisted living based on some of these strategies and these numbers that we're, 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 we're explaining it today. And um, we have another program called the, uh, what's well, a product that it's called the assisted living business starter kit. And you just, it's just basically all the documentation that you need. doesn't come with any training or coaching or anything, but it definitely has over 200 documentations about, you know, everything that you need to, 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 open and operate a uh, assisted living facility so check out our website we got some great stuff there and hopefully you're enjoying the podcast um if you are <clears throat> uh, leave us a review and let us know how you feel and if you have any um 